Working with AI can be really frustrating sometimes. You never really know how your prompt will turn out. It could be amazing, or there might be a word or two that's throwing things off. It's a toss-up. So far, all of my experiments with Midjourney never really gave me the results I wanted. Things have improved quite a lot, especially with version 4, but unpredictability is still par for the course. As frustrating as that might be, I want to understand a little bit better how the system works. So in this video, we'll approach things differently. Instead of me trying to visualize a vague idea in my head, we'll go the other way around. We'll start with an already existing image and see how close we can get to that with Midjourney. Let's go! The images we're going to use are from some of my favorite artists. The focus here is not to try to match the original with 100% accuracy. I don't think that's even possible. I'm mostly interested in seeing how well we can copy aspects of an image, like the composition or the color palette, object rendering, stuff like that. To help me craft the perfect prompt, I'll use a little utility called Clip Interrogator. The way it works is really simple. You point it to a specific image, and then Clip Interrogator will try to write a prompt that matches that image. For my initial testing, the prompts don't always make sense, so there will be some tweaking from my side. Now, let's start with one of my favorite photographers. Wikipedia calls Jeff Browse a documentary photographer, but I don't think that's 100% accurate. The way I would describe his work is photography focused on the ordinary, roadside architecture, strip malls, and suburban landscapes. The photographer is fascinated with all aspects of the contemporary American landscapes. As you can see, the photos are truly captivating. The first image we're gonna try and steal from is going to be this one here. I love pretty much everything about it, the composition, the lighting, and the overall mood. But I think it's going to be a little tough to describe as a prompt. The composition, for example, is going to be quite a challenge. Midjourney likes to put things in the center of the image, and this photo works the exact opposite way. The center is almost empty, and everything happens on the frame of the image. So let's see what will happen. Let's start with Clip Interrogator first. What I find interesting is that the prompt references two artists, Nan Golden and Meyerowitz, but not Jeff Browse. From a style perspective though, I see why it picked those, so the prompt is not entirely wrong. The American realism part of the prompt is spot on, but everything else looks kinda weird. Just out of curiosity though, let's try out the prompt without any modifications, just to see the kind of results we will get. <laughs> okay, I kinda expected that, but let's see now how we can improve things. We have a lot to figure out. First things first, we're going to keep the first part of the description. And we should also describe what's on and around the table. I went a little bit too overboard with the description and I'm almost certain that this is just going to overwhelm the AI, but let's keep going. Well, <laughs> the AI kinda did its own thing. There's definitely no red checker tablecloth, the walls are definitely not empty, the mustard and sugar bottles are replaced with water and something that looks like oil, I suppose, and I only see two chairs instead of four. But that's to be expected. When there's so many instructions, the AI tends to get confused. So I think we need to strike a delicate balance here. We need to keep things simple and somewhat vague, but not to the point where the AI will just give us completely unpredictable results. So let's give it another try. I don't think I've reduced the prompt enough, but the results are a little bit better. I mean, given the limitations, but we still have the typical mid-journey issues. The curtains are not white, and instead they have the checkerboard pattern that was meant for the tablecloth. Only one of the images has the tablecloth actually covering the whole table, and the objects are not really the ones we asked for. Notice also that the dark wood that was meant to describe the wall is also the main material for the table. But despite those issues, I think the overall mood is there. 
Before moving to the next image, let's try one last time. And for this one, we'll go with a more stripped down version of the prompt. I'm not gonna bother trying to dress up this scene. I'll just focus on the mood and some broad stroke descriptions. This set of images I like a lot, especially the third and fourth one look absolutely wonderful. And for once, we don't have a composition with all elements in dead center. I could be wrong, but I think that's as far as we can go composition-wise. I don't think I can get any closer to the original image. But I want to adjust one last thing because I just realized I didn't use the word diner. So I'm gonna get rid of Americana and replace it with the word diner. It's not a bad set, but I think I prefer the previous one. But the third image looks really nice. I like the composition and the overall lighting. Okay, so let's recap. Here's the original image, the inspiration for the prompt, and here's the best set of images out of Mid Journey. Given how little we had to work for these images, the results are really impressive. Did we get close to the real thing? Composition-wise, not really. Overall mood? Kinda. And of course it goes without saying, if I had to choose between the original or the Mid Journey images, I would always pick the original. Mid Journey did the best it could do, so I'm not really disappointed with the results. It would be nice though, if we could somehow define where each object should be on the frame, and then have the AI draw things based on that guide. Something maybe for the Mid Journey team to think about. But enough with this image, let's now try another artist, and let's go the illustration route. The artist I have in mind is Sean Downey. Sean creates these beautiful realistic female portraits. He's active on social media, so if you like his work, you can follow him on Instagram. His illustrations are full of atmosphere, and he has a great eye when it comes to lighting and colors. I could spend hours just looking at all the beautiful details in his images. I'm also a thousand percent certain that Mid Journey will perform great here, especially when it comes to simpler compositions like this one, Mid Journey can do insanely well. More challenging compositions like this one, I'm not so sure. The reason I'm so certain is because a few months ago, Mid Journey made some big strides when it comes to portraiture. It can draw waist up portraits really well, so I think this one's in the bag, but let's find out. Clip Interrogator gives us this prompt, but I'm going to edit it heavily because some of the things there don't make much sense. Her face is a mauve flower. <laughs> what? So, yeah, let's modify things a bit. I think that describes the image quite well. Now, let's try to define the style a little bit more. And let's throw in some more random words for good measure. I gotta say, Mid Journey nailed it, and I absolutely love the variance we get on the face of the character. It's not just one type of face, and it's also not the traditional beauty look that most of the images default to. Of course, the original is much more refined and pretty much every aspect, but it's still super impressive to see these images coming out after just a couple of seconds. As per usual though, Mid Journey doesn't exactly understand the prompt, so the flowers that are meant to describe the wall are now also part of the woman's shirt. I don't really think we can fix that, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna add the word plain to describe the blue shirt, just to force things a specific direction. Yeah, it's still not enough. What's cool though is that if you do this enough times, you can almost predict the result. So I knew that this wasn't going to work, but I can't think of another way to describe the shirt, and this can easily be adjusted in Photoshop, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to make though a couple of other adjustments. I don't really like the color palette, so I'll get rid of the descriptive colors. I think color-wise, the previous images look better. The second image of this set though looks really, really good. There's a nice balance between the scale of the flowers in the background and the main character in the foreground. And the muted palette also works really well. Of course, the original image still looks better than the mid-journey ones, but it's scary how close we can get to the real thing. When the AI is trained on a specific setting, the level of success is quite high. 
Now, let's try one last image. We've experimented with William Eggleston in other videos, but I want to see how well Midjourney can deal with exteriors, architecture, cars, stuff like that. So we're gonna base our prompt on this nice little Polaroid from Eggleston. I love the style of this image, the strong shadows and the overall composition. I think this is going to be quite a challenge for Midjourney, but let's see. We're gonna start with Clip Interrogator. And I think in this case the prompt looks good, so I'll just copy and paste it. I must say I did not expect this at all. The results are really, really good. The shadows, the composition, everything looks great. I think though that the overall Polaroid effect is a bit too strong, so I'll try to adjust the prompt a tiny bit just to see if we can get something better. I'm gonna get rid of these filtering heat comment and also the second mention of Polaroid. I think it's affecting things way too much. Wow, <laughs> this goes way beyond any expectations. If you don't pay too much attention, the images look like actual photographs, so if I was just scrolling through my feed, these could easily fool me. Of course, if we pay closer attention, we can see the artificial nature of things. But still, everything in those images is spot on. The look, the composition, the rendering of the environment, it's crazy how good everything looks. But as is the case with the first image, controlling the placement of the elements is not really possible, but I think we have to make peace with that, at least until we get some uh, feature that will let us adjust that part. Midjourney version 4 is on a whole other level. It can easily render interiors and exteriors, and it can also do all of that in a realistic way. And the impressive thing is that the engine can now produce a lot of different visual styles. Of course, the level of control when it comes to placement of elements is still in its infancy, but I'm quite confident we will see some sort of solution sooner rather than later. And at this point, I can guess what some of you might be thinking. Artists are in danger. Personally, I don't believe that at all. There are so many different things an AI has to take into account. Things that an artist can intuitively do without much effort. From stylistic choices, to references to other artwork or life events, and a ton of other things. For example, picking the right model to pose on a portrait. The AI cannot really do that. It can get close, but the result will look more like the generic version of the real thing. Anyway, that's my opinion, but I really don't think that any artist is in any danger. And I'm also looking forward to seeing mainstream artists experimenting with AI, grabbing elements from different images and mashing everything together. I think that specifically will be super interesting to see. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.